tonight's episode of Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Rick Russell. This is your head coach, Jonathan Carter. Tonight we're going to preview our game against the three and five Frontier Cougars. Uh, we also have a few Seminole football players that are going to join us this evening. But coach, before we do that, let's recap the uh, first loss of the season. You know, it's a very hard-fought game. We played to the very end, and like we said last week, we wanted this for the kids because, man, they, they deserved it. They really did. And, uh, you know, to, to see them walk off that field, especially those seniors, you know, their, their last time getting here on this field, it was, uh, it was crushing, kind of heartbreaking, to be honest with you, just because, uh, you know, I haven't been around a whole lot, Coach, but I know they've, they've really worked their tails off to, yeah. to get to 7-0 and then, you know, to, to take the loss. But, you know, take nothing away from Barnesville. They're, they're, they're a very, very good football team. And, and we knew that we had to play a, a near flawless game, yeah. uh, you know, to make it happen. But, uh, you know, we knew that we had it in us. You know, we, we have we have athletes just like they do. Uh, you know, but they're they're just so sound. They've played together for so long. They've got so many kids. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we're gonna move on, Coach. But uh, you know, before we dive too deep into Frontier, let's talk a little bit about the lost form. Right. Yeah. You mentioned. I mean, you can. I can see it in the eyes of the kids before the game. They wanted it. You know, and they everybody in this locker room believed that we would get that win. Um, and you mentioned Barnesville being a good team. Just one of the best teams I've seen in the Valley in a long time. Just because of what they do. It's just they've got size on the line. And I don't mean a little bit of size. They're all big. They're all big. They're all aggressive. They all execute well. And then you throw in the, the taller boy at, at tailback. Um, it's, a, it's a tough combination to stop. And, I, and then going into the game, I knew we wouldn't. I knew we wouldn't probably shut him down completely. I mean, of course, that's what you hope for. I knew it would be a tough, uh, tough ask to do that. And I, and I thought we could move the ball, um, which is, that's kind of what happened in the game. You know, they got their yards, we got our yards. I think there was only a, a 60 or 80 yards difference in total yards. Um, but the big difference is, is they punched theirs in and we couldn't just, couldn't get across the goal. We had four trips to the red zone. We didn't come away with any points. Um, and you mentioned you had to have a flawless game. You know, that, that, those were flaws. You know, those, those were flaws in, in, the, in the, the game. that We just we can't overcome that against that good of a team. Um, we had a cut, an interception, but that, was, that didn't really make or break anything. It was just the fact that we just couldn't, that last 20 to 15 yards, we just couldn't get it in. They, they kind of tighten up, and that's a sign of a good team. You know, they're, they're sound defense, too. They've got size on defense. Their secondary is very good. So, um, but I, I did, I was proud of the, the way our kids played the entire game. We never quit. In fact, the second half we came out and kind of, uh, we, we got in the unbalanced and, and put our big guys on one side and, and drove them down the field a couple times in, in that formation. Um, but, we did punch in a couple times. We had a long pass to Max. Uh, Demchek, he cut a really nice ball, took a, took a shot out on the ball, and then we drove down in the end of the third, beginning of the fourth, drove the ball down, ran it pretty well, and AJ punched one in. But, but yeah, just, I was proud of the way the kids kept fighting. Um, you know, just didn't go our way. We had to have a perfect game, and we didn't. You know, there were some miscues with the execution things on defense. Um, in offense both so but no proud of the way the kids fought proud of the way the kids fought and they, and they, they were you know visually upset after the game so not that that's a nice thing to see but it shows you that they care you know it shows you that they want it so you know when you got a kid crying or upset about losing that means that they they care about this program care about the other players in the locker room yeah if if there is one exciting thing about the loss is mm -hmm. that because the, the kids care about this first sure. year, they care about each other, mm -hmm. and uh, they know how it feels now. Yeah. And, you know, coach, scrolling down, I don't want to look ahead by no means, but, you know, scrolling down Division 6, Region 27, there's there's not a Barnesville team in there. No. I, I don't believe no. number one, number two, number three, I don't believe they're anything. 
play with this Martinsville team that we played, which which is great because you know I think we can play with any, anyone in the region, you know, providing you know we make the playoffs and we get there. Uh, I will take care of it. I I told the boys that I said if you play how you did out there, snippets. I mean, there were some parts where we didn't get the greatest. But if you play in the good parts, if you play that way in our region, you know, we can win this region playing that way. So, um, but yeah, uh, you, you're exactly right. That, you know, in our region, there's no one as good as that team we just saw. It, and, and we played with them at that yeah. time out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, even, even though, you know, the 44-14 score, that didn't dictate how close that game was. You, right. know, you mentioned it were 60, 80 yards total offense difference. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, win more first downs. And, you know, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. You know. Thank good football team yeah. out there. So, you know, yeah. we, we got to put that one behind us, learn from the few mistakes we made, pray to toughen our guys up a little bit. That's and, right. And, you know, we talked too. There's no doubt that Barnesville football team woke up Saturday morning knowing they were in a football game too. I think so. There's a lot of heading going on. Yeah, no, I think so. They haven't been pushed all season like that, yeah. you know. Um, I don't think those kids have ever played a full game besides the playoffs in two years, really. You know? right. so, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's, good. that's a good yeah. point. So, I mean, they were they were definitely pushed. The start, their starters never came out. They, they were kind of getting gassed. The, the linemen were kind of getting tired. So, no, just just proud of being for the boys. I mean, I know it's a loss, but we, we have good things we can take away from yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, futures future's great. We have two more yeah. regular season games that's right. in the playoffs. So. That's right. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be back with our first guest of the of the evening, Lucas Stock. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We're here with our first guest of the of the evening, Lucas Stiver, number 40, defensive line linebacker, fullback. Coach seem to have a lot of kids to play three or four positions. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> Lucas, welcome to the show, buddy. Uh, congratulations on a great start to the season. Uh, you know, we're sitting seven and one heading into week eight. We did lose a game last week, but you know, it's time. It's time to move on from that. Learn from the mistakes, and not that we made very many. That was a very good football team, but let's learn from these mistakes and, and, and move on. And clearly, in the third quarter of last week's football game. The coaches, coaching staff had seen something. We come out in the in the second half and, and virtually a double win with uh, you and Raider switching out. We had uh, um, Whitaker out there as well, and we moved the ball pretty well in that third quarter. Third third quarter before they uh, adjusted. Um, explain explain what they seen and how that play worked so well in the in the second half. Well, uh, at halftime we saw that. Barnesville's defensive ends were just coming down inside of the yard, and we knew that we could get outside with them, and we just wanted to have a couple extra lead blockers out there for Tucker, and we just gashed him with that on balance. Yeah, it, it worked. It worked really well. Uh, both sides of the, of the line, actually, right yeah. left. Uh, you know, opened things up for Tucker, of course. Now, Lucas, if there's a sixth man award in basketball, if there was a twelfth man this football team would clearly be you uh, because you're you're in and out on and off the field uh, numerous times uh, throughout the game you know you switch it fullback with Raider uh, you've switched a lot early in the season at linebacker and uh, you know now I see you at defensive tackle as well in those guard um, explain what your role is as being that guy that can play a handful of positions on this football team when someone needs a rest well, I always just try to be right there with Coach Hugh and Coach Nixon and just be there whenever whenever they need me, whenever the team needs me, and just try and do my part, you know? Yeah, perfect. And, you know, we, we've talked to a few different uh, kids so far this season about their dedication uh, to the team, uh, their their devotion to the weight room. And you're one of those guys, you know, uh, Gillespie for one and, and Ray the other. Uh, and you, can you explain uh, how that dedication uh, to the weight room that this football team's made you a better player this year? Well, I think just like being there every day is like helped my work ethic in terms of like being at practice every chance I get, doing everything I can over the summer and everything, and uh, just bulking up in the weight room just helped me to 
be able to go through a whole game and not get as banged up as I would have last year when I was not as big as I am now. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, you know, that kind of brings me to my next question, too, because, you know, uh, an upperclassman like you are, spending the time in the weight room, these younger kids uh, see you guys devote the time in the offseason to, to become better football players and, and to help this team win. And, uh, you know, the leadership on this team, uh, I've noticed a difference in the past two years watching you guys, and, and everyone's noticed a difference in the past two years in, in our records as well. So can you explain um, the drastic improvements from, say, three or four years ago and, and what leadership's done to get us to this point? Well, I think as we went through and we've had the better seasons, like we've bonded together as a team closer than we've ever been before, and we're just we're more of a family now than we ever have been. So I think that's part of the reason why the bonds are better. And yeah, I, I agree. You know, We've talked in previous episodes too about you know friends and, and buddies and people hanging out together and, and you know it's not just about what takes place in this locker room it's it's what takes place outside here too and staying together as friends and, and like you say you form a you form a bond and you become a family and uh, that, that that really drives drives this program for certain so like I said buddy we unfortunately we were faced with our first loss last week to a very very good. Uh, Barnesville football team, and uh, tomorrow night we head down down the river uh, to face uh, the Frontier Cougars, and they're they're a three and five football team. And I looked today on online, Joe Joe Idle, they scored some points. They're averaging like thirty two points a game. Now they do give up a few, but uh, their team is capable of scoring some points. So, and, and uh, they kind of need this win to stay in the hunt. In the playoff race, so to get them up, to get them a better position, so uh, we're going to ride down there and they're going to look to 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 steal a win from us. So what can we expect tomorrow night from this football team? Well, we're looking to make a statement tomorrow, coming back from uh, last week's game. We just want to go down there and we really want to shut out is what we want. So we're just looking to make a statement and move on. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of a uh, lot of bottle energy and frustration in this football team after after what happened last week and, and you know nothing against you you kids you guys played you guys played really a good football game uh, unfortunately we played it against a, a, a very good football team so could you have anything to add yeah um you mentioned you know being a dedicated worker you know he, he's in the weight room all the time working um trying to get better um last year he actually we had him at fullback kind of start the season. Um, you know, we had, you know, when you first start a season, scrimmages, things like that, you're not sure where the players are going to shake out. Well, it happened to be that we moved Dalton Phillips to fullback, and he was a senior big kid. Um, worked out, but he rotated in here and there um, last year, and then this year, he's been gradually getting more playing time. You Like you mentioned, defensive line, fullback line, backer, just kind of everywhere. Um, Getting a lot of reps in JV games, which has helped him, I think, tremendously. And then this Friday, I really thought that, that kind of showed his potential, blocking was. Um, and other things, he caught a ball, showed he showed he can catch, showed some hands. But, uh, I, and I'll say something real quick before that, even when he was a freshman, runs the ball extremely hard. Like when he gets the ball, it's, it's downhill, run hard, run people over. I think then you rip your jersey off there in the JV game on yeah. those people trying to get, off, get a hold of it. But uh, anyhow, back to the blocking Friday, you know, I, I thought that showed his potential. So this week we've been working him in, you know, at fullback, and, and he's going to do majority of the blocking um, tomorrow night and kind of maybe throughout the season. I want to see what he can do. Uh, I gave him some goals and, and set some goals on some pancake blocks and, and some blocks. So, you know, that, that's the goal tomorrow to run the ball. He, he's going to be a major part of that blocking and running, you know, a few here and there. But, but just a great kid, like you mentioned. Works hard in the weight room. Uh, good locker guy. Uh, pretty quiet, doesn't say much. Uh, doesn't say too much. He, he, he jokes around with the guys, though, so good locker room guy. But I'm hoping moving forward that, that he can show that he, you know, he can be physical with the fullback squad. 
and because we need that going into the playoffs. You know, this is kind of the last push, these last couple games, and and hopefully make a deep run in the playoffs. So I'm looking forward to hopefully him taking over that fullback spot and showing what he can do. That's a good point, Coach. I had kind of had that in my notes. He's a quiet kid. He is. His parents may be watching now and say, no, he's not. <laughs> yeah. And he's kind of like a quiet leader, you know what I mean? He is. He does all the things right. He does. You know, but you seldom see him make a mistake. And so, uh, listen, buddy, we wish you the uh, best of luck tomorrow night. Let's go get that eighth win and uh, make a push in the playoffs. You're going to be a big part of it, all right? When we return, we'll be back with our second guest of the evening, Wyatt Cohen. Welcome back, everyone. We're here with our second guest of the evening, Wyatt Cohen, number five, the kicker. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said when he walked out the door. The kicker is here. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Coach and I, we actually talked last week about trying to get you on the show. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if you realize the importance of, of having a good quality kicker and the opposing team starting their drive on the 20 or 25 yard line. That's, that's big. Uh, you know, several times last year before, before Juan arrived, you know, we were. Teams were starting on their 40, 45, even close to the 50. We just didn't have anyone to get the ball down the field. So, and you've been you've been a, a, a giant surprise, and we're glad to have you on the kicking team. So, tell us about it, man. Are you you enjoying it? I mean, you didn't play last year. No, what, I didn't. Play what brought last you here this year? And tell us a little bit well, about it. Coach, and actually, his daughter reached out to me last for yeah last year about football. Saying I should be the kicker is like. Might as well, because I wasn't doing anything else. wasn't doing soccer, so might as well kick. See if I like it, but I love it. It's actually it's a lot of fun. Good, cho good choice. Yeah. Not just yeah, a kicker. I mean, I just, you've been in on some tackles, too. Yeah. I keep no, yeah. in tackles, and I've yeah, yeah. jogged you down for a few years. Now. That's right. So let's go over a few stats. So you've, you've had, this is crazy, 57 kickoffs this season for a total of 2,553 2, yards. That's nearly 45 Pretty yards well. kick. Yeah, that's a lot of yards. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a lot of yards. As a matter of fact, how good are you in geometry? Not very. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you on. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Okay. How many miles is 2,553 yards? Is it a lot of miles? I think it is. One point one point four five miles. One and a half miles. <laughs> just in kicking. I'm just in yeah. kicking this year. That's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's like kicking from here to. What like uh, the marathon here yeah, in the town of the Church of Christ? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I could I'd have to cut my spree. Yeah, so essentially, you know, that means the, the opposing team. You know, when you you kick forty five yards a shot. That means the opposing team is is catching the ball on their twenty. And then, you know, our, our kickoff team has has played well this year. You know, they get down the field fast and you know twenty five thirty yards on them. That's that's perfect. So, I mean, had you ever had you ever kicked before? Well, when I was also a kid. Did like soccer for a good few years, and then freshman year I did soccer too. So I had a little bit of experience kicking the ball. Okay. Well, you you continue to get. He's one of these kids, coach, that continues to get better week yeah. in, week in and week out. And I remember uh, being in the field house. Must have been for a sidelines meeting or something the, this summer before the season actually kicked off and. Uh, and he walks through the door into the equipment room, and I think he, he was actually looking for the bag of balls, maybe Jet had or something, or he found them, whatever. But, you know, when I left here that evening, walked out the doors, and he's kicking extra points out here by himself, you know, like kicking six, eight balls and gathering them back up and kicking them again. Yeah. You know, not too many kids have that dedication. So, uh, I mean, um, how much did that help you throughout the summer doing, doing Kicking on your own. Oh, I mean, it was a pretty good help. Just trying to get some practice in, like kicking the ball right, in a good spot, a sweet spot. Yeah. So we also had uh, Ian Phillips, who Bill Phillips' son. Everyone knows Bill from from the, the local news, but uh, yeah, he he played high school football at uh, Steubenville Bigger and also went on to college to kick. And he 
and Coach had him lined up, and he came down here several times, right, Coach? Oh, yeah, several yeah, times every Sunday. Still Sunday. Yeah, still yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So, how's that experience been? Is he, he's it's, probably helped. It's been a great help. Yeah, I mean, he's helped me through a lot. Just he's taught me everything he knows. He always tells me trust the process. Keep that one in mind every time you do extra point. Really close. Well, yeah. there's there's no doubt that yeah. it's it's going to be good. So you, your extra points are one you're 31 of 45, and that's nearly 70 percent. I would say probably through the first three games yeah. you were probably at 50. Right. Yeah. At around 50. So he's still getting slow. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. First seven games of football. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm sure there was some nerves and some yeah. some some butterflies and but just to see uh, your confidence uh, that you have right now it's it's like kind of like you know coach we score a touchdown we just walk the other way because now it's kind of almost a guarantee right. 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 you know you know the, the Belcher game week one kind of looking over your shoulder you know did yeah. you make it or not but right. you know, now so listen man the strides you've made have been uh, have, you, have been tremendous and it, it, it's all due to the to the hard work you yes. know so that you know, Ian's still coming down here, and you're still working to, to, to get better. And this is this is week eight, right? You know, trust the so process. kudos to you, absolutely. Trust, trust the process. So I know you spent the uh, uh, most season primarily as a kicker, uh, and, and you know maybe the kicker goes off and does his own thing and isn't like around the team all the time. You know what I mean? Um, but what are you seeing from this team today? You know, we we. we we had our first loss of the season last Friday, and uh, you know I didn't really get a chance to talk to the kids after the game. But, you know, that's 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 a hard loss to take. You know, a very hard loss to take. But we got we got to move on and have to grow from it. So, uh, what are you seeing from the team today, and what do you think about our performance tomorrow night? Well, I think I think last Friday that night was kind of rough, but this week I think we're ready. We're locked in, ready for Frontier, ready to play some football. Yeah. I think as a team, we're ready to just. Score some points. Yeah, it's not a good feeling, but you you know you have to you have to put that behind you at some point and uh, and move forward. And uh, we've listen, we've got two more regular season games, and, yeah. and without a doubt, we're having a good postseason. So we got to take care of our business. And then you know what happens first round of the playoffs? Who we get? No one really knows yet. Yeah. But uh, you know we'll concentrate on them when we get there. So yeah. focus on Friday's game. Absolutely sure. right. Absolutely why? Why? Coach, you anything that? Yeah. Um, well, I mentioned a little bit earlier about you know him coming out. Maybe as a freshman, I, I tried to talk him into coming. He was actually at sign-ups and then yeah. decided to play soccer and not do football, which you know is completely fine. Um, and then this year, uh, finally got got him kind of pinned down. Of course, it was my daughter. Really, she's like the lead scout on the team. She <laughs> she talks to everybody at the school. I you know trying to talk him into play football, which is Great for me, right? So she mentioned something to me. He said, yeah, I'll kick. So um, I wasn't sure if he would even kind of come to practices. I mentioned he could still play soccer if he wanted. But he, he kind of decided to just dedicate himself to football. He came to all the conditioning all the two days. Um, so he, he was here for all that. And we start getting a kicking coach. When was that, June? Yeah, it's yeah. early June. June. And, uh, before that, he was coming down. He would yeah. come down here and there a couple times a week, and like you mentioned, get the get the balls and just go out there and kick by himself. But I knew I couldn't really teach him. I don't <laughs> I don't know how to kick soccer style, so I didn't want to even mess with like messing yeah. up. So I found Ian Phillips. So he started coming down every Sunday. Been coming down, still coming down, and that just shows you the hard work that this kid will put in. Um, he we come down. He comes down every Sunday at nine a.m. Meets them for an hour, hour and a half works on kicking and so and he's gotten progressively better every week okay. and um, you know when he first came down I was thinking well he could probably kick extra points but I wasn't sure on the kickoffs because they weren't real long yeah. there the first you know yeah. when we first started so I'm like well you know we'll see maybe we can get a bigger kid and maybe kick the ball that far but man has he gotten good at that like some touchbacks and you know Sometimes like a knuckleball and things, you know, you know, like you mentioned, they're starting at the 20, 25 instead of the 40 or 50 like they were last year. Yeah. And uh, just all the hard work and dedication he's putting in. And just because he's a kicker, like I, I mentioned, he's down here every day, he went through the same thing, uh, 
uh, tackling drills, hitting, all that, all that stuff. So, which I'm glad it did because that first week he had uh, what three tackles, two yeah, tackles against Belfry. Yeah, against Belfry. I, you know, I'm like, I'm hoping that didn't keep happening. I don't know if my kicker make all tackles, but it showed that he would and would be willing, you know, mix it up and get in there. Which, you know, is a good thing because I was actually pretty happy. I think it was yesterday he came to me and he said, hey coach, what do I have to do to maybe play defense next year to actually play football? So that shows you what kind of kid he is. He wants to get in the mix of it, wants to play football. I think he loves being in the locker room with the guys. You know, he's always here, the camaraderie, things like that. So, you know, I look forward to hopefully, I'm going to give him some things to, to look at and do in the off season and uh, hopefully he can help keep kicking, but we'll work on some defensive things. And, Hopefully we'll see him next year, you know, playing on defense for us too. So, yeah. but no, just a great kid, hard worker. Um, has I think two. Do you still have two jobs or just one? Right? Just one. He did have two jobs right? in the summer. Yeah, you don't hear that too many times. So, uh, just a great kid. Uh, I can't wait to see him get better kicking and hopefully play some some yeah. actual football. I shouldn't say actual football. You know what I mean? Some mm -hmm. some football yeah. next year. Yeah. Get some tackles in there. That's right. Tackles. That's right. Interceptions. <laughs> Put some stickers on the helmet. That's right. He gets a bunch of stickers. <laughs> he gets a sticker for every extra point. Okay. Uh, yeah. Touchbacks too. In and, and touchbacks. Yeah. So there's 31 actually. Yeah, he's getting four touchbacks. That's 35. Yeah. Already. Right. Yeah, he's got yeah. a bunch of stickers on his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you had two jobs. That's crazy. Yeah, I was working at the Mexican restaurant at Dairy Queen. Just trying to save up so I get a car. Got the car. He's got a nice car, yeah. Is a hard worker. Yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. That's also before I was yeah. walking down here to practice the kick. To yeah, he was yeah, you're walking down here for yeah. trying to get some practice. So, there. Kennedy, my daughter, if you're watching, <laughs> if you're watching this. This kid has two jobs. Andy was practicing kick. Yes, yeah, six <laughs> days a week. He comes here on Sundays and practice. <laughs> Listen, man, that's that's absolutely crazy that you you put the time into you know your first year. Then you're the kicker. Yeah. And yeah. to come here on a Sunday. Yeah. You know, for an hour, hour and a half, and, and dedicate more time. That's that's man. That's awesome. It is. That's awesome. Well, listen, buddy. We uh, we wish you the best of luck um, tomorrow night and, and the rest of the season. And can't wait to see him back, coach. That's and right. It sounds like number five is going to get his jersey dirty. That's right. Year across. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> All right, buddy. Listen, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll watch some of the highlights from the Barnesville Shamrock football game. Tucker Howe with a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. Tucker does a good job of stripping the ball out and jumping on top of it. Tucker Howe with a nice game on the ground. We run a counter and get some nice blocks for a nice game. Tucker scrambles up the middle for 17 yards. Tucker steps out of the pressure and gets a first down. Tucker again scrambles for a first down. Once again, Tucker feels the pressure and has a long game. Tucker Howe for a quick strike to Cooper Howe. Tucker sees the soft coverage and hits Cooper in the seam. Tucker hits Chance Allen for a short game. Once again, Tucker takes what the defense is giving him. Corbin Farnsworth with another sack. Corbin does a great job of getting off his block and getting the sack. Tyler Whitaker gets a tackle for a loss. Tyler reads the screen and drops the ball carrier for a loss. Tucker Howe with a big gain outside. We run a sweep and get some nice blocks on the outside. Tucker Howe with a nice gain off left tackle. Tucker finds the crease for a nice gain. Tucker hits Lucas Stiver for a first down. 
Tucker does a great job to find Stiver for the big first down. Tucker finds Corbin for 42 yards. Tucker throws a perfect ball to Corbin on the sidelines. Tucker finds Max for a seminal touchdown. Max makes a nice catch for the 32 yard touchdown. AJ Rutter with a long gain on the ground. We run a counter and AJ, with AJ and he picks up some nice yards. Logan Powell with a fantastic catch along the sidelines. Logan does a great job of keeping his feet in and making the catch. AJ Rutter with another hard run. AJ does a great job of breaking some arm tackles and getting some nice yards. AJ punches it into the end zone. We get some nice blocks from Logan and Ashton, allowing AJ to get into the end zone. When we return, we will preview this week's opponent, the Frontier Cougars. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Coach, it's hard to believe it's week nine. I know. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Week nine. It seems like yesterday we sat down here and did the, the preview. The coach is going before right. season even kicked off. Yeah. It's just absolutely crazy. But uh, tomorrow night we travel down to down the frontier to face the three and five Cougars. Coach, they, uh, I got online today, like I said, and they've, they've they, they can score some points. Yeah. They, they, give, they give up a few. You and I have discussed they have a few playmakers as well. Yeah. Um, you mentioned they're scoring right around 30 points a game. Um, you know, it's mainly their two weapons are their, their tailback and their, and their quarterback, number 11 and number 4. Um, their quarterback, he can, he can slim it around. Like you, can't let, you, know, you can't let your guard down a corner or safety thinking, oh, he can't throw it this far because he can throw it. And he, he's, he can throw 50, 60 yards easy. Um, their tailback, he's very loose and very quick. He can, he can score. Can, they, they use him in a lot of different places. They, they put him out wide. They run the ball with him. Um, now, their, their line's kind of a small, on the smaller side on both sides of the ball. Uh, so I really think we can kind of, you know, with our size on, our, on the line, I think we can kind of take it to him a little bit, drive the ball. Hopefully, run the ball quite a bit, but no. Everyone knows the history of Frontier. Also, yeah. we know that they know. Everybody knows we've we've won every game except the one. Um, that was Tyler Graham's senior year. Um, sorry, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, everybody knows the history. So it's like a Super Bowl for them down there. I mean, this is their their big game. This is their state championship game, basically. Um, they want this one. They always do that they get fired up so you know we've got to kind of be ready for their punches there in the beginning um, kind of take the wind down their sail you know so but no they, they've got some playmakers they take deep shots they take a lot of deep shots like i said the quarterback can throw so he'll drop back and just i um, mean sling it quite a few times so yeah i think we've got to come out and just uh kind of take it to them and hopefully we can get some offense clicking yeah um, you know, like you said, they've only beaten us at one time, and it's, uh, I was here to witness that. You know, you kind of scared real quick to jump in your vehicle and get to that guy. <laughs> That's and, right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a few players on this team, too, that uh, lived down in those parts. Mm -hmm. You know, I know yeah. some of those kids sure would like to, to knock off those kids. Oh, yeah, definitely. After Central, so. But, you know, I know those kids are damn sure looking forward to tomorrow night's games, too. Oh, they're excited. Yeah. It gets them fired up just yeah. as much. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, coach, we'll take a short break, and we'll wrap up this week's episode when we return.
Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, just a little bit of information leading into uh, this, this coming weekend. Um, home tickets, or, excuse me, tickets to the game will be sold at the gate for $6. Uh, of course, most of you should know where uh, Frontier High School is, 44870 Ohio State Route 7, New Madam Morse, Ohio. Um, so, some of the key dates the upcoming week. The JV game at home against uh, Frontier, it, it's been canceled, there will be no JV game. The junior high game uh, will be at home on October 24th at 6 p.m. And congratulations, Coach, to both of the uh, third and fourth grade and the fifth and sixth grade football teams. They're in the playoffs right now. Uh, both of those teams won their first round and they'll play this weekend uh, at, at River. So, you know, best of luck to, to, those, to those kids. You know, I know a few of those coaches and a few of those kids. And, uh, you know, they've played lights out they have. along with the junior high these yeah this uh this youth program it's yeah. on the rise for certain it is so best of luck to, to all those kids and parents um, coach any final comments yeah i mentioned uh, a little bit earlier about this kind of being their super bowl so we have to kind of be ready for that that excitement um you know that energy that they're going to bring out i'm sure um, we got to take it to them, kind of punch them in the mouth in the beginning, kind of uh, take that out. You know what I mean? But now I look, I look for a uh, game that we can kind of work on things, execution, um, execute better on defense, offense, kind of springboard us into that playoffs. Because that, you know, that's a kind of a whole different season in itself. So th these next, this game, the next game, we've just got to work on execution, getting better. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. And, uh, you know, I, you know, still kind of bummed out about last Friday, but, you know, it's, we, we've got to put it behind us. The, the, the future for this entire program is, yeah. is sky high. You look at these youth programs, junior high, and, and uh, you know, this football team here, I mean, you know, we're not done, like we mentioned. You know, we lost a game, you know, we got to move on, but uh, there is no Barnesville. All right, Division Six, yep. Region Twenty Three, they're, they're just not there. So, uh, you know, future's bright for these guys too. And I, I look forward when that time comes to see who we play, where we play. Playoff time's always, always real exciting. That's for right. certain. And uh, you know, listen, dude, the classes, kids, and Lucas and Wyatt, they just were. Yeah, they they did great tonight. And, you know, both of them are real quiet kids, soft spoken. Yeah. Um, it's great to sit down with both of them, you know, and talk a little bit before the show, and, and talk with them after the show as well, you know. But uh, um, you know, why I feel really good for that kid, you know. He we talked that he actually came from Maine. Right. Yeah, he said he moved down here in eighth grade year. Yeah. 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 And, and great that he played soccer one year. He said maybe he took a year off and yeah. didn't do anything. Right. And now he found his found his new love in soccer. Where he's home here. The kicker. That's right. The kicker. Hopefully something else. That's it. We hope so, Coach. Listen, uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Tomorrow night I'll be on the sidelines there with you. All right. Don't ask me for any points. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks. That's a wrap on this week's show. As always, we'll be here next Thursday to discuss uh, the, the game against the Frontier Cougars. We'll also preview our Week 10 opponent, Shady Side Tigers. Go Knowles.